Fixold Cameras produces step-by-step, close-up videos of simple, common repairs and basic maintenance on classic and vintage cameras. Your ability, the quality of your tools, and the condition of your camera will affect the success of your repair endeavor. A successful completion of the demonstrated repairs ultimately depends on your camera repair skills. This size zero copal shutter has had both the diaphragm blades and the shutter blades knocked out of position. With the back and front lens removed, the half moon locking screw needs to be flipped so that the retaining ring can be removed. Generally, the bladed edge of a screwdriver can be used to nudge the retaining ring in a counterclockwise direction until the ring spins free. The shutter speed ring cam and the numbered shutter speed ring will probably stick together as you remove them. Move the detent, the spring should stay put in the sleeve. Flip the shutter over and take out the screws holding the re aperture retainer. It is advisable to take pictures or draw diagrams of uh, the various screws as they're removed as they are different sizes and need to be replaced in the exact point that they were taken from. The screws removed, lift the aperture retaining ring and then lift the aperture control ring. Next are the screws that hold the shutter blade control ring. There are four screws on the shutter blade control ring. Catalog those separate from the aperture blade control ring screws. They are not interchangeable. Note that the final screw is a little different. Remove the shutter speed, no not speed, the shutter blade control ring. The ring detent bar and four screws will be revealed. You might want to remove and lay the detent bar aside so as not to have it fall out inadvertently at another time. The flash socket will need to be removed so that the main shutter plate can clear the end post. For now, the main shutter plate can be taken out as a unit, but before reassembly, additional parts will have to be removed. Yikes, that's kind of a mess. The main plate mechanism is at least functioning properly. Dump the loose shutter blades to proceed to the aperture unit. Remove the screws holding the aperture cover plate. Very carefully, with a pair of tweezers, lift the aperture cover plate free. Now the blades will need to be worked into position following the cam post to the cam slot. It takes a great deal of patience and delicacy to get the blades in the proper position. This is the hardest part of the repair, and the procedure has been condensed to save time and space. It actually took about five minutes to get those blades in the proper position. With the blades layered and seated as shown, carefully lay the aperture cover plate back into position. It is very unlikely that all of the, the upper posts on the blades aligned with the holes, so therefore you are going to have to take a small bladed screwdriver and try to work the blades so that they move just slightly so that the holes will line up with the post and that they'll drop in place. With the cover plate finally in place, you can exhale, take a deep breath, and put the screws in. You've just completed the hardest part of the repair. Make sure you maintain a slight even downward pressure on the aperture plate until all the screws are secure. Flip over the unit so you can temporarily install the aperture control ring to test for proper function. Now it's time to remove the slow speed escapement from the main shutter plate. With the lower screw removed, remove to the upper screw. The escapement link lever will also need to be removed. Now the main plate can be flipped over and the shutter blade spacers can be laid in place. 
Now install the shutter blades in the position and orientation as shown. Note the shutter drive ring is now in the release position. The shutter blades are much easier to install with the drive ring in this position. Carefully install the main shutter plate into the housing. Make sure that the uh, cable release socket is on the right side of the shutter release lever. Smoothly and carefully position the uh, shutter plate so that the housing lines up properly. Once the alignment is as it should be, the screws of course can be installed. Keep steady pressure between your thumb and index finger so that the housing and the shutter plate do not slip out of place until the screws can be tightened properly. Now give it a quick test. Install the detent bar. Whoops, try again. Well, upside down and backwards. There, that looks about right. That'll work. Now install the shutter ring, making note of the detent points. Make sure that the proper screws are installed to hold the ring in place. Make note that the screw that goes in the notch has a shoulder on it. Test to see that it functions as it should, locking the blades open. Now the aperture ring can be installed. Make sure that the posts line up with the holes so that the uh, ring will operate properly when turned. When the ring is seated properly, the blades will begin to function. The ears on the retainer for the aperture ring are offset. Make sure they are placed properly, for if they are installed as here, the uh, aperture control ring will bind. Flip the ring and install with the shouldered ears so that the shouldered part is down rather than up. Sure that you install the proper length screw because if you use a screw that is too long it will go through and damage the aperture blades. That's why it's so important to mark the screws because you can't just test them to make sure that they work. You have to know that it's the right screw. Flip it over and give it a test. Now install the slow speed escapement link lever. The link lever has a small shouldered bushing. Make sure it is separated from the lever before installation. Move the cocking lever and place the shouldered bushing. Place the link lever as shown. Align the holes. Install the proper screw. With the link lever complete, the slow speed escapement can be installed. The long upper attachment screw can be left in place. Oops, don't forget to shim. Now place the escapement. Pull the cocking lever back to give clearance to the slow speed escapement. Position the lower lever against the post. With it properly positioned, install the lower screw. Hopefully the detent spring is still in place, and if so, go ahead and install the detent. Now the shutter speed cam plate can be installed. There are several levers that need to be timed properly within the position of their cam slots. Take the time and work your way around to make sure that they all are properly seated. Once seated, continue to hold pressure so that you can then put the cover plate with the dial numbers in place. There is an alignment post that will catch a locking notch. 
continue the downward pressure with the installation of the retaining ring. It takes a light touch sometimes to get the threads to start. Once started, the ring can be spun on with the tweezers or the blade of a screwdriver. Snug is tight enough. Tests for proper operation. Double check the diaphragm blade function. The flash socket still will need to be installed. The sink socket should go back together fairly easy. Hold in place and uh, wait to tighten both sides down after it's completely installed. All in all, a repair of this sort on a shutter of this type is a fairly tedious repair. It requires a skill set that might need a little practice to develop. Don't get discouraged. There is one more thing that needs to be done, and that is to set the half moon lock screw so that the retaining ring does not work loose. The Copal Size Zero Shutter, a classic. Thank you for watching.